السلام علیکم ورحمۃ اللہ وبرکاتہ نحمد ونسلی علی رسول الکریم اما بعد رب شحلی صدری ویسلی امری وحل العقدۃ من لسان یفقہ قولی علم نشرح لك صدرک و وضعنا عنك وزرك الذي انقض ظهرك ورفعنا لك ذكرك فإن مع العسر يسرا إن مع العسر يسرا فإذا فرغت فانصب وإلى ربك فرغب قال الله تعالى في الفرقان الحميد يا أيها الذين آمنوا من يرتد منكم عن دينه فسوف يأتي الله بكوم يحبهم ويحبونه أذلة على المؤمنين أعزة على الكافرين يجاهدون في سبيل الله ولا يخافون لومة لائم صدق الله العظيم اللهم صل على محمد النبي الأمي وعلى آله وسلم تسليما My noble brothers, sisters and elders for the last few weeks we have spoken about a very unique topic a topic that will enable us to develop a very strong bond with our Creator and it is the Muhabbat of Allah Rabbul Izzat in Surah Al-Baqarah Allah has made mention وَالَّذِينَ آمَنُوا أَشَدُّ حُبَّ لِلَّهِ the people of belief they have strong Muhabba, love for Allah Rabbul Izzat Last week we mentioned a few steps that we should take that will allow us to develop love for Allah. Qira'atul Qur'an bit tadabbur wa tafahum To read the Qur'an with contemplation will allow us to develop muhabbat with Allah. The second step that we made mention of is ma yazalu abdi يَتَقَرَّبُ إِلَيَّ بِالنَّوَافِلْ حَتَّى أُحِبَّ That we should engage in optional deeds. The more we engage in optional deeds, the more we will develop muhabba, love with Allah. If we study one statement of Allah, we come to know that our existence <coughs> Our making is revolved around muhabba. The Prophet of Allah says that Allah says, Kuntu kanzam makhfiya. Allah says, I was a hidden treasure. Kuntu kanzam makhfiya. I was a hidden treasure. Fa'ahbabtu an u'raf. So I desire to be recognized. Fa'khalaqtu al-khalq. So I created you. So the reason why Allah created us is because of muhabba. فَأَحْبَبْتُ Allah desired that He should be recognized. So the reason of our existence is muhabba. The reason of our existence is muhabba. Inshallah, maybe in a few months time, we will elaborate on one very comprehensive and concise statement of our Prophet of Allah that Qadi Ayaz has mentioned in Ashifa fi Hukuk al Mustafa. The Prophet of Allah once was approached by Hazrat Ali radiallahu ta'ala an and Hazrat Ali radiallahu ta'ala an said, O Prophet of Allah, tell us about your sunnah and sunnatihi. What is your sunnah? And the Prophet of Allah replied with 17 things. And one of them is Al-Hubbu Asasi. Al-Hubbu Asasi. There were 17 things that the Prophet of Allah replied with. But one of them was Al-Hubbu Asasi. The love that I have for Allah is my foundation. Without loving Allah, a person cannot have a foundation. 
that if a person doesn't have a foundation, he can't construct anything above it. So muhabba is essential. It is very, very important. So it is important to know the steps to be taken. The third step to be taken that will allow us to develop muhabba with Allah has been mentioned in Surah Al-Ahzab. Before I read the verse, I would like to make mention that Islam is a religion of moderation. The Prophet of Allah said, Khairul umuri awsatuha. The best path to take is the path of moderation. We do not drop below par and we do not reach a height that we cannot sustain. Khairul umuri awsatuha. The best path to be taken is a path of moderation, something that we can maintain and sustain. But there's a verse in Surah Al Ahzab in which Allah Rabbul Izzat has made it very clear that when you come in this noble field, do not apply the laws of moderation. Try to reach the heights. Remember Allah Rabbul Lizard with great remembrance in abundance. If you cannot sustain that remembrance, still, whenever you have the ability, the opportunity, the chance, touch the heights. And the Prophet of Allah has said, Hatta you call in Nahula Majnoon. Hatta you call in Nahula Majnoon. Remember Allah so much that people start to call you a mad person. A bad person. When a person falls in love with someone, every second or third word that he utters is a word that reflects the muhabba that he has for that object or for that person. So a majnoon is that person that every second or third word that he utters reflects that the muhabba that he has for Allah. If we fall in love with a person, we will SMS, we will ring, and we will say we're missing you. Likewise, this person has that feeling, that attachment with Allah, that, oh Allah, I'm missing you. This person develops such a muhabba that he becomes a living example of the verse in Surah An'am. And this verse and the message that it contains should be implemented by each one of us. قُلْ إِنَّ صَلَاتِي وَنُسُكِي وَمَحْيَايَ وَمَمَاتِي لِلَّهِ رَبِّ الْعَالَمِينَ That my prayer, my sacrifice, my life and my death is regulated, dictated, controlled by my Master. Such a profound, comprehensive muhabba with Allah. Some people will say, why am I saying muhabba? Because the Arabic word is mahabba. But in Urdu, it is muhabba. So that's why maybe from my tongue it slips muhabba. But in Arabic I know it is mahabba. But in Urdu they call it muhabba. Sabukat al-Isani. قُلْ إِنَّ الصَّلَاةِ وَنُسُكِ وَمَحْيَايَ وَمَمَاتِ That their love and muhabba is so profound for Allah that everything that they do in life revolves around one thing and one thing alone and that is Allah. And that's why Allah says in the Quran وَذْكُرِ اسْمَ رَبِّكَ وَتَبَتَّلْ إِلَيْهِ تَبْتِيلًا Not only وَذْكُرِ اسْمَ رَبِّكَ Remember the name of your Lord. No. وَذْكُرِ اسْمَ رَبِّكَ وَتَبَتَّلْ إِلَيْهِ تَبْتِيلًا Twice, تَبْتِيلًا Remember Allah with devotion. Allah could stop there and say, Remember me with devotion, with contemplation. But Allah has added another word. تَبْتِيلًا With complete devotion. That when you sit down, your mind is empty. Your heart is empty. Your thoughts are empty. 
And the only thing that occupies your heart, your mind and your thoughts is Allah. Then remember Allah, then you will start to enjoy it. Then the muhabba will increase. If only the tongue is engaged in the remembrance of Allah, but the mind is somewhere else, the soul is somewhere else, the thoughts are somewhere else. We are not fulfilling the order tabtila. We will not attain high levels of muhabba. Very important. Heart should be clean. Because when we are remembering Allah, Allah is going to send bounties from above. And if the vessel is already occupied, where will the bounties drop into? The bounties have to drop into the vessel. The vessel has to be clean and empty. So if the muhabba of the makhluk is dwelling in the heart and has occupied the space in the heart, the muhabba of Allah cannot descend. Those people that have worked upon the remembrance of Allah and have developed muhabba for Allah, their stories are amazing. I would like to share one with you today. If somebody came to any one of us, including myself, and said that I will teach you a chapter of the entire Quran, I will teach you the chapter of the Quran, one surah of the Quran. But I would like you to give all possessions that you hold. My reply and your reply will say, Tum pagleo. I don't need that chapter. I don't need it. Move out. I am not ready to release my possessions to learn one chapter. And in that chapter, the name of Allah is mentioned many a times. One day, Hazrat Ibrahim alayhi salatu was salam was taking care of his flock. And he passed by one person. And he heard this person saying, Subhana dhil mulki wal malakut. Subhana dhil mulki wal malakut. Subhana dhil izzati wal azmati wal haybati wal qudrati wal kibriyai wal jabarut. This is a dhikr that speaks about the greatness, the might, the grandeur of Allah. So Hazrat Ibrahim alayhi salam jumut him. He started to enjoy it. The person stopped. Hazrat Ibrahim alayhi salatu salam said, Ek dafa hor pardo yaar. Read it once more. He said, this is not free. Not free. What will you give? He said, I'll give half my flock. I'll give half my flock, read it once more. So the person read it. Subhana dhil izzati wal azmati wal haybati wal qudrati ila akhirihi. The more he read it, the more Hazrat Ibrahim enjoyed it. Because the utensil, the vessel is empty. It is clean and it is polished up. Clean and polished up. No holes, it will contain everything. It will sustain everything. So Hazrat Ibrahim enjoyed it so much, more than the first time. He stopped. Hazrat Ibrahim, like when we take one scoop of ice cream from Beskin Robbins, and we start to enjoy it, and we go again, we say, one more scoop. We enjoy it. We don't want to give it up. There's, a be there's delicious food in front of us. We take the first morsel of food, the person says, Ya Sharam Kuru, Pair de Kwapna. You're going to put on weight. Yeah, don't worry. One more. We can't stop. We're starting to enjoy it. Hazrat Ibrahim couldn't stop. He started to enjoy it. He said, Read it once more. He said, It's not free. He said, What will you give? He said, Take the other half. So now empty handed. He's got nothing left now. So he read it. When he read it, Hazrat Ibrahim enjoyed it even more. Hazrat Ibrahim said, Read it once more. He said, you got nothing to give now. He said, I will be the shepherd for the flock. Your flock, I will take care of it. But read it once more. Ajeeb. At that time, the person revealed his identity and said, I am an angel. Listen to what the angel said. 
the angel said Allah sent me and said find out what price does Hazrat Ibrahim put to my name Hazrat Ibrahim mere naam ki kya kimat lagate hai what price he puts to my name but a person will not put a price to the name of Allah if he does not enjoy the name of Allah if the muhabbat is not there and that's why the prophet of Allah said al hubbu asasi al hubbu asasi the muhabbat of Allah is my foundation once the foundation is muhabbat then you can sacrifice everything that you have for Allah that's why Hazrat Ibrahim, uh, Hazrat Abu Bakr Siddiq radiyallahu ta'ala an in front of the Prophet of Allah said that I am ready to bring an end to the life of my father Abu Kahafa. Abdullah bin Ubay bin Salul, Raisul Munafiqeen, his son Abdullah said, Oh Prophet of Allah, give me one ishara, one signal, give me permission, I will kill my father. al hubbu Asasi. So Hazrat Ibrahim والسلام, was ready to give everything for the muhabbat of Allah. And this is what Allah says, وَذْكُرْ اسْمَ رَبِّكَ وَتَبَتَّلْ إِلَيْهِ تَبْتِيلًا With complete conviction, remember Allah. Close your eyes and think about it. Another step to be taken that is very very imperative to develop this muhabbat for Allah. It is a step that will take a lot of struggle. But it is a formula if upheld and practiced, the pace of muhabba will increase. And this is where the Sahaba are very different than us. And that is to sacrifice your desires to fulfill the orders of Allah. Very important. To sacrifice our desires, our ambitions and our dreams if ambitions, desires are not in conformity with the laws of Allah. Let me add that as well. One person is walk, walking down the street and he sees something that is attractive and from within he has a push. He is compelled to look. At that time his desire is to look at something. The desire and the will of Allah is not to look. The order of Allah is not to look. At that time, sacrifice the desire. We're sitting in a majlis. Sitting in a majlis. People are speaking about possessions. And people are saying that I have this and I have that. And you are living on rent. I have this, I have that, you're living on rent. Now he goes back home and he thinks about it. That every year, every second year, I have to shift from one rent house to the second rent house. From the second rent house to the third rent house. Now his desire is to approach the bank. Allah kata nikarasa. Allah says don't. Sacrifice your desire. In the second section, we spoke about it last night. In the second section of Surah Al-Baqarah, Allah speaks about the Munafikun. And it has been made mention that the Munafiks used to say, وَإِذَا قِيلَ لَهُمْ آمِنُوا كَمَا آمَنَ النَّاسِ قَالُوا أَنُؤْمِنُوا كَمَا آمَنَ السُّفَحَا أَلَا إِنَّهُمْ هُمُ السُّفَحَا وَلَكِنْ لَا يَعْلَبُونَ are you telling us to become true Muslims from the heart and to emulate these stupid people that have given up everything, lost everything, migrated to Medina empty-handed? You want us to be like them? Allah says, Allah innahum humus sufaha. Ye pagale, woni. These are mad people, not the Sahaba. But they do not know. To lose what we have to please Allah is not sufaha, it is not stupidity, it is not madness. This is noble. And it is the sunnah of Allah. You give the first time, 
Allah will repay you handsomely. Man jaa bil hasana, falahu ashru amthaliha. The law is that if a person commits to a good, the minimum reward is ten. But when he is in the path of Allah, it is to do something to promote Islam, to project Islam, then the minimum reward is seven hundred. Allah in the hum humus sufaha. We sit in gatherings and we look at what people have and we hear about what people have, but we do not check how he got it. We are only looking at what he has. Ye to pucho kaise liya, kahan se aaya? Where did it come from? From the channel of haram, from the channel of halal? Before we become interested in what he has? Because to give up what you have to please Allah is noble. To sacrifice these ambitions and these feelings that erupt within. When we see people with the possessions of this world. This is natural. But to control it, to suppress it is noble. So whenever we have an opportunity to use any body part at a station that is unlawful and we use it properly, we will develop the muhabba for Allah. I've said this many a times and I will say it again. Do not look at how a person is living. But look at a person how he leaves. This is what Islam teaches us. Do not look at a person how he's living and what he has. How he leaves this dunya. Firaun had everything. How did he leave? Falyoma nunajika bi badanika litakuna liman khalfaka aya. Allah preserved his body. Surat Yunus, Allah preserved his body. A lesson for humanity, for those people that do not suppress their desires, those people that get caught up in the moment and try to impress the makhluk and try to keep up with the standard that the makhluk has made. We don't want to meet the standard that the makhluk has made. We want to meet the standard that Allah and the Rasul has made. Their standard, that is our fashion. That is what we should be emulating, nothing else. Standard has been set by Allah and the Rasul. Suppress these desires. Qarun. What he had, what Allah granted him, we cannot even dream of. His life was a life that people envied. Allah speaks about it in Surah, in, in surah Rum. Allah speaks about it. Or Surah Qasas, in Surah Qasas, Allah speaks about it. But what was his ending when he was leaving this world? He was begging Musa alayhi salatu wasalam, forgive me, forgive me. He is swallowed by the land and all his possessions are placed on his head and they are sinking into the ground until the day of judgment. Ye uska akhir hai, ye uska tatimma hai, that is the end. So do not try to meet and compare with the standards that people have made because that standard cannot be met by us. Because everyone is of different ability and status. But one standard that Allah and the Rasul has left, that standard can be met by the men, by the women, by the rich, by the poor, by the sick, by the healthy. That is the standard that we meet, that we try to fulfill. This will allow us to develop a strong muhabba with Allah. Strong muhabba with Allah. And I would like you to do something that we have learned from our mashaykh. That when you sit in your gatherings, after a few moments, just try to, just pause for a split moment and think about what you've been talking about. Very important. When you are in your majalis, even with your friends, with your family members, after a few moments, if you do remember what I said, pause for a little while and say, I'm kya baat kar rahe? 
in my talk, in my discussion, in my get together, is there any reflection of the muhabbat that I have with Allah? If there isn't, then find out what does your talk reflect? If it reflects this dunya and the possessions of this dunya, then there is a spiritual ailment. Then we know that there's a problem in our attitude, a problem in our approach, a problem in our connection with Allah. That's why the Prophet of Allah, he says that, and we find this in the Muslim du'as, he has said this many a times, and we find this in the Muslim du'as, and mostly the Prophet of Allah used to make this supplication at a time where he was alone with his Creator. فَإِذَا فَرَغْتَ فَانْصَبْ وَإِلَىٰ رَبِّكَ فَرْغَبْ all day he has committed to the work of deen. After this Allah says, now commit yourself to me. After this Allah says, commit yourself to me. The Prophet of Allah is working for deen. His every action, his every utterance, his every movement is to project Islam. But Allah says, فَإِذَا فَرَغْتَ when you finish all that, فَانْصَبْ وَإِلَىٰ رَبِّكَ فَرْغَبْ Then you come to me. There should be a special time with Allah. Special, special time with Allah. Where you are free. Kun raaz ki baate karni Allah se. Kun raaz ki, kun nakharon ki baate karni Allah se. Some words of secrets. Some sentiments shared with Allah. وَإِلَىٰ رَبِّكَ فَرْغَبْ And that is in the dark night. Where everyone is sleeping, where Allah has come down with His mercy and He's saying, Who wants to talk to me? Who wants to talk with me? At that time, the Prophet of Allah used to make a dua in abundance. Allahumma inni as'aluka hubbak. Ya Allah, ma tu se sawal karta hu, tumari muhabbat ka. Oh Allah, I ask you for your muhabba, for your love. I ask you. Because whatever level I have, there is no limit to the muhabbat of Allah. Anything that is connected to the Allah has no boundaries. If we want to make the dhikr of Allah, there is no boundaries to it. Allah mentions in Surah Al-Kahf, كُلَّوْ كَانَ الْبَحْرُ مِدَادًا لِكَلِمَاتِ رَبِّي لَنَفِدَ الْبَحْرُ قَبْلَ أَن تَنْفَدَ كَلِمَاتُ رَبِّي وَلَوْ جِئْنَا بِمِثْلِهِ مَدَدًا Knock down all the trees, make pens out of these trees, turn all the oceans into ink, dip those pens into the ocean, start writing the greatness of Allah. The oceans will become dry, the pens will break, the safhat will come to an end, but you cannot write the greatness of Allah. There's no limit. Allah in his zaat is unlimited. Allah's rahmat is unlimited. Allah's razaq is unlimited. Allah's kareem is limited. Whatever sifat we take out, that in itself has no boundaries. وَإِلَىٰ رَبِّكَ فَرْغَبْ Every moment the Prophet of Allah, not even a split second moved away from the remembrance of Allah. Not a split second moved away from the remembrance of Allah, even if he's sitting with his family. Despite that Allah says, وَإِلَىٰ رَبِّكَ فَرْغَبْ Kuch wakat hame bhi de do. In the dark night, communicate with us. And this is what we have to do, develop that muhabbat of Allah. Some special moments in the day, or special moments in the night, where the wife is not talking in our ears. And my sisters are listening downstairs, where the husband is not making a request, jai banao, make tea. Where there's no interference from the husband's side, where there's no interference from the wife's side, where there is no interference from the children. The child is dirty, he has to go to the toilet, yeah, he has dropped down, he's starting to cry. No interference. A very quiet time where we can sit down, empty our vessel, empty our mind, fill it with the muhabbat of Allah, communicate with Allah, speak to Allah, ask Allah to give you muhabbat. 
Now, some people may have that time in the night. Some people may have that time after Fajr, before Fajr, after Zohar. Everyone has different times. But the best time is in the night. So keep in mind, we have to build our house of connection with Allah on the foundations of Muhabba as the Prophet of Allah did. And that's why I mentioned the hadith of Qadi Ayyaf that has been mentioned in Ash-Shifa fi Hukuk al-Mustafa al-Hubbu Asasi. Allah give the person that is speaking. And Allah give my noble brothers and sisters high levels of Muhabba. High, high levels of Muhabba. That that Muhabba compels us to live a life that is pleasing to our Creator, pleasing to Muhammad sallallahu alaihi wasallam. That Muhabba that allows us to sacrifice anything that is unlawful, any ambition that is unlawful, any dream, any station, any action that is not in conformity with Allah and Rasul's ahkamat. Allah Rabbul Izzah give you. Me, Tawfiq, to implement what we have heard. Wa akhiru da'wana, and alhamdulillahi rabbil alameen.